Penicillin, Wikipedia article audio. Penicillin is a group of antibiotics which include penicillin G, penicillin V, procaine penicillin, and benzathine penicillin. Penicillin antibiotics were among the first medications to be effective against many bacterial infections caused by staphylococci and streptococci. They are still widely used today though many types of bacteria have developed resistance following extensive use. Medical Uses Susceptibility Side Effects Members Natural Penicillins Beta-lactamase Resistant Aminopenicillins Carboxypenicillins Ureodopenicillins Beta-lactamase inhibitors Mechanism of action Structure History Discovery Medical application Mass production Structure determination and total synthesis Developments from penicillin Production Biosynthesis Notes About 10% of people report that they are allergic to penicillin, however, up to 90% of this group may not actually be allergic. Serious allergies only occur in about 0.03%. All penicillins are beta-lactam antibiotics. Penicillin was discovered in 1928 by Scottish scientist Alexander Fleming. People began using it to treat infections in 1942. There are several enhanced penicillin families which are effective against additional bacteria, these include the anti-staphylococcal penicillins, aminopenicillins, and the antisodomonal penicillins. They are derived from penicillium fungi. The term penicillin is often used generically to refer to benzyl penicillin, procaine benzyl penicillin, benzathine benzyl penicillin, and phenoxymethyl penicillin. Procaine penicillin and benzathine penicillin have the same antibacterial activity as benzyl penicillin but act for a longer period of time. Phenoxymethyl penicillin is less active against gram negative bacteria than benzyl penicillin. Benzyl penicillin, procaine penicillin, and benzathine penicillin can be given by intravenous or intramuscular injections, but phenoxymethyl penicillin can be given by mouth because of its acidic stability. While the number of penicillin resistant bacteria is increasing, penicillin can still be used to treat a wide range of infections caused by certain susceptible bacteria including streptococci staphylococci clostridium and listeria genera the following list illustrates minimum inhibitory concentration susceptibility data for a few medically significant bacteria common adverse drug reactions associated with use of the penicillins include diarrhea hypersensitivity, nausea, rash, neurotoxicity, urticaria, and superinfection. Infrequent adverse effects include fever, vomiting, erythema, dermatitis, angioedema, seizures, and pseudomembranous colitis. Penicillin can also induce serum sickness or a serum sickness-like reaction in some individuals. Serum sickness is a type 3 hypersensitivity reaction that occurs 1 to 3 weeks after exposure to drugs including penicillin. It is not a true drug allergy, because allergies are type I hypersensitivity reactions, but repeated exposure to the offending agent can result in an anaphylactic reaction. Anaphylaxis will occur in approximately 0.01% of patients. Pain and inflammation at the injection site is also common for parenterally administered benzathine benzyl penicillin, benzyl penicillin, and, to a lesser extent, procaine benzyl penicillin. 
Bacteria constantly remodel their peptidoglycan cell walls, simultaneously building and breaking down portions of the cell wall as they grow and divide. Beta-lactam antibiotics inhibit the formation of peptidoglycan crosslinks in the bacterial cell wall, this is achieved through binding of the four-membered beta-lactam ring of penicillin to the enzyme DD transpeptidase. As a consequence, DD transpeptidase cannot catalyze formation of these cross-links, and an imbalance between cell wall production and degradation develops, causing the cell to rapidly die. The enzymes that hydrolyze the peptidoglycan cross-links continue to function, even while those that form such cross-links do not. This weakens the cell wall of the bacterium, and osmotic pressure becomes increasingly uncompensated eventually causing cell death. In addition, the buildup of peptidoglycan precursors triggers the activation of bacterial cell wall hydrolysis and autolysins, which further digest the cell wall's peptidoglycans. The small size of the penicillins increases their potency, by allowing them to penetrate the entire depth of the cell wall. This is in contrast to the glycopeptide antibiotics vancomycin and tycoplanin, which are both much larger than the penicillins. Gram-positive bacteria are called protoplasts when they lose their cell walls. Gram-negative bacteria do not lose their cell walls completely and are called spheroplasts after treatment with penicillin. Penicillin shows a synergistic effect with aminoglycosides, since the inhibition of peptidoglycan synthesis allows aminoglycosides to penetrate the bacterial cell wall more easily, allowing their disruption of bacterial protein synthesis within the cell. This results in a lowered MBC for susceptible organisms. Penicillins, like other beta-lactam antibiotics, block not only the division of bacteria, including cyanobacteria, but also the division of cyanels, the photosynthetic organelles of the glaucophytes, and the division of chloroplasts of bryophytes. In contrast, they have no effect on the plastids of the highly developed vascular plants. This supports the endosymbiotic theory of the evolution of plastid division in land plants. The chemical structure of penicillin is triggered with a very precise, pH-dependent directed mechanism, affected by a unique spatial assembly of molecular components, which can activate by protonation. It can travel through bodily fluids, targeting and inactivating enzymes responsible for cell wall synthesis in gram-positive bacteria, meanwhile avoiding the surrounding non-targets. Penicillin can protect itself from spontaneous hydrolysis in the body in its anionic form, while storing its potential as a strong acylating agent, activated only upon approach to the target transpeptidase enzyme and protonate in the active center. This targeted protonation neutralizes the carboxylic acid moiety, which is weakening of the beta-lactam ring NC bond, resulting in a self-activation. Specific structural requirements are equated to constructing the perfect mouse trap for catching targeted prey. The term penom is used to describe the common core skeleton of a member of the penicillins. This core has the molecular formula RC9H11N2O4S, where R is the variable side chain that differentiates the penicillins from one another. The penom core has a molar mass of 243 g slash mole, with larger penicillins having molar mass near 450 for example. Cloxacillin has a molar mass of 436 g slash mole. The key structural feature of the penicillins is the four-membered beta-lactam ring, this structural moiety is essential for penicillin's antibacterial activity. The beta-lactam ring is itself fused to a five-membered thiazolidine ring. 
The fusion of these two rings causes the beta-lactam ring to be more reactive than monocyclic beta-lactams because the two fused rings distort the beta-lactam amide bond and therefore remove the resonance stabilization normally found in these chemical bonds. Starting in the late 19th century there had been many accounts by scientists and physicians on the antibacterial properties of the different types of molds including the mold penicillium but they were unable to discern what process was causing the effect. The effects of penicillium mold would finally be isolated in 1928 by Scottish scientist Alexander Fleming in work that seems to have been independent of those earlier observations. Fleming recounted that the date of his discovery of penicillin was on the morning of Friday, September 28, 1928. The traditional version of this story describes the discovery as a serendipitous accident, in his laboratory in the basement of St. Mary's Hospital in London. Fleming noticed a petri dish containing staphylococci that had been mistakenly left open was contaminated by blue-green mold from an open window, which formed a visible growth. There was a halo of inhibited bacterial growth around the mold. Fleming concluded that the mold released a substance that repressed the growth and caused lysing of the bacteria. Once Fleming made his discovery he grew a pure culture and discovered it was a penicillium mold, now known as penicillium chrysogenum. Fleming coined the term penicillin to describe the filtrate of a broth culture of the penicillium mold. Fleming asked C.J. La Touche to help identify the mold, which he incorrectly identified as penicillium rubrum. He expressed initial optimism that penicillin would be a useful disinfectant, because of its high potency and minimal toxicity in comparison to antiseptics of the day, and noted its laboratory value in the isolation of Bacillus influenza. Fleming was a famously poor communicator and orator, which meant his findings were not initially given much attention. He was unable to convince a chemist to help him extract and stabilize the antibacterial compound found in the broth filtrate. Despite this, he remained interested in the potential use of penicillin and presented a paper entitled A Medium for the Isolation of Pfeiffer's Bacillus to the Medical Research Club of London, which was met with little interest and even less enthusiasm by his peers. Had Fleming been more successful at making other scientists interested in his work, penicillin for medicinal use would possibly have been developed years earlier. Despite the lack of interest of his fellow scientists, he did conduct several experiments on the antibiotic substance he discovered. The most important result proved it was non-toxic in humans by first performing toxicity tests in animals and then on humans. His following experiments on penicillin's response to heat and pH allowed Fleming to increase the stability of the compound. The one test that modern scientists would find missing from his work was the test of penicillin on an infected animal the results of which would likely have sparked great interest in penicillin and sped its development by almost a decade. In 1930, Cecil George Payne, a pathologist at the Royal Infirmary in Sheffield, attempted to use penicillin to treat psychosis barbie, eruptions in beard follicles, but was unsuccessful. Moving on to Ophthalmia neonatorum, a gonococcal infection in infants, he achieved the first recorded cure with penicillin, on November 25, 1930. He then cured four additional patients of eye infections, and failed to cure a fifth. In 1939, Australian scientist Howard Florey and a team of researchers at the Sir William Dunn School of Pathology University of Oxford made progress in showing the in vivo bactericidal action of penicillin. In 1940, they showed that penicillin effectively cured bacterial infection in mice. In 1941, they treated a policeman, 
Albert Alexander, with a severe face infection, his condition improved, but then supplies of penicillin ran out and he died. Subsequently, several other patients were treated successfully. In December 1942, survivors of the Coconut Grove fire in Boston were the first burn patients to be successfully treated with penicillin. By late 1940, the Oxford team under Howard Florey had devised a method of mass-producing the drug, but yields remained low. In 1941, Flory and Heatley traveled to the U.S. in order to interest pharmaceutical companies in producing the drug and inform them about their process. Flory and Chain shared the 1945 Nobel Prize in Medicine with Fleming for their work. The challenge of mass producing this drug was daunting. On March 14, 1942, the first patient was treated for streptococcal septicemia with us made penicillin produced by Merck and CO. Half of the total supply produced at the time was used on that one patient. By June 1942, just enough U.S. penicillin was available to treat 10 patients. In July 1943, the War Production Board drew up a plan for the mass distribution of penicillin stocks to Allied troops fighting in Europe. The results of fermentation research on corn steep liquor at the Northern Regional Research Laboratory at Peoria, Illinois, allowed the United States to produce 2.3 million doses in time for the invasion of Normandy in the spring of 1944. After a worldwide search in 1943, a moldy cantaloupe in a Peoria, Illinois market was found to contain the best strain of mold for production using the corn steep liquor process. Pfizer scientist Jasper H. Kane suggested using a deep tank fermentation method for producing large quantities of pharmaceutical grade penicillin. Large-scale production resulted from the development of a deep tank fermentation plant by chemical engineer Margaret Hutchinson Russo. As a direct result of the war and the War Production Board, by June 1945, over 646 billion units per year were being produced. G. Raymond Rettu made a significant contribution to the American war effort by his techniques to produce commercial quantities of penicillin. During World War II, penicillin made a major difference in the number of deaths and amputations caused by infected wounds among Allied forces, saving an estimated 12% 15% of lives. Availability was severely limited, however by the difficulty of manufacturing large quantities of penicillin and by the rapid renal clearance of the drug, necessitating frequent dosing. Methods for mass production of penicillin were patented by Andrew Jackson Moyer in 1945. Flory had not patented penicillin, having been advised by Sir Henry Dale that doing so would be unethical. Penicillin is actively excreted and about 80% of a penicillin dose is cleared from the body within 3 to 4 hours of administration. Indeed, during the early penicillin era, the drug was so scarce and so highly valued that it became common to collect the urine from patients being treated, so that the penicillin in the urine could be isolated and reused. This was not a satisfactory solution so researchers looked for a way to slow penicillin excretion. They hoped to find a molecule that could compete with penicillin for the organic acid transporter responsible for excretion, such that the transporter would preferentially excrete the competing molecule and the penicillin would be retained. The uricose uric agent probenicid proved to be suitable. When probenicid and penicillin are administered together, Probenicid competitively inhibits the excretion of penicillin, increasing penicillin's concentration and prolonging its activity. Eventually, 
the advent of mass production techniques and semi-synthetic penicillins resolved the supply issues, so this use of probenicid declined. Probenicid is still useful, however, for certain infections requiring particularly high concentrations of penicillins. After World War II, Australia was the first country to make the drug available for civilian use. In the US, penicillin was made available to the general public on March 15, 1945. The chemical structure of penicillin was first proposed by Edward Abraham in 1942 and was later confirmed in 1945 using X-ray crystallography by Dorothy Crowfoot Hodgkin, who was also working at Oxford. She later received the Nobel Prize for this and other structure determinations. Chemist John C. Sheehan at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology completed the first chemical synthesis of penicillin in 1957. Sheehan had started his studies into penicillin synthesis in 1948, and during these investigations developed new methods for the synthesis of peptides, as well as new protecting groups groups that mask the reactivity of certain functional groups. Although the initial synthesis developed by Sheehan was not appropriate for mass production of penicillins, one of the intermediate compounds in Sheehan's synthesis was 6 aminopenicillanic acid, the nucleus of penicillin. Attaching different groups to the 6 APA nucleus of penicillin allowed the creation of new forms of penicillin. The narrow range of treatable diseases or spectrum of activity of the penicillins, along with the poor activity of the orally active phenoxymetal penicillin, led to the search for derivatives of penicillin that could treat a wider range of infections. The isolation of 6-APA, the nucleus of penicillin, allowed for the preparation of semisynthetic penicillins, with various improvements over benzyl penicillin. The first major development was ampicillin in 1961. It offered a broader spectrum of activity than either of the original penicillins. Further development yielded beta-lactamase-resistant penicillins, including flucloxacillin, dicloxacillin, and methicillin. These were significant for their activity against beta-lactamase-producing bacterial species but were ineffective against the methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus strains that subsequently emerged. Listeria monocytogens, from less than or equal to 0.06 μg ml to 0.25 μg ml, Neisseria meningitidis, from less than or equal to 0.03 μg ml to 0.5 μg ml, Staphylococcus aureus, from less than or equal to 0.015 μg ml to more than 32 μg ml. The first step is the condensation of three amino acids L alpha amino adipic acid, L cysteine, L valine into a tripeptide. Before condensing into the tripeptide, the amino acid L-valine must undergo epimerization to become D-valine. The condensed tripeptide is named delta l cysteine d valine The condensation reaction and epimerization are both catalyzed by the enzyme delta l cysteine d valine synthetase, a nonribosomal peptide synthetase or NRPS. The second step in the biosynthesis of penicillin G is the oxidative conversion of linear ACV into the bicyclic intermediate isopenicillin N by isopenicillin N synthase, which is encoded by the gene PCBC. Isopenicillin N is a very weak intermediate, because it does not show strong antibiotic activity. The final step is a transamidation by isopenicillin and n acyltransferase, in which the alpha amino adipyl side chain of isopenicillin N is removed and exchanged for a phenylacetyl side chain. This reaction is encoded by the gene PENDE, 
which is unique in the process of obtaining penicillins. Another development of the line of true penicillins was the antisodomonal penicillins, such as carbenicillin, ticarcillin, and piperacillin, useful for their activity against gram-negative bacteria. However, the usefulness of the beta-lactam ring was such that related antibiotics, including the mesalinams, the carbapenems and, most important, the cephalosporins, still retain it at the center of their structures. Penicillin is a secondary metabolite of certain species of penicillium and is produced when growth of the fungus is inhibited by stress. It is not produced during active growth. Production is also limited by feedback in the synthesis pathway of penicillin. The byproduct, L lysine, inhibits the production of homocitrate, so the presence of exogenous lysine should be avoided in penicillin production. The penicillium cells are grown using a technique called fed batch culture in which the cells are constantly subject to stress, which is required for induction of penicillin production. The available carbon sources are also important, glucose inhibits penicillin production, whereas lactose does not. The pH and the levels of nitrogen, lysine, phosphate, and oxygen of the batches must also be carefully controlled. The biotechnological method of directed evolution has been applied to produce by mutation a large number of penicillium strains. These techniques include error-prone PCR, DNA shuffling, itchy, and strand overlap PCR. Semisynthetic penicillins are prepared starting from the penicillin nucleus 6 APA. Overall, there are three main and important steps to the biosynthesis of penicillin G.